Hello MathO33 students. In this tutorial I'm going to be giving you some helpful hints and pointers for the analysis portion of your Lining Things Up project. I'm also going to show you how to use Excel for the couple portions where you need Excel. Okay, so we need to create a new worksheet, i.e. a tab, in our Excel file. So a new sheet of paper and we're going to label it Analysis. Then we're going to type answers to the following questions and show calculations in Excel where necessary. And of course always keep our answers organized and clearly labeled so that way whoever is reading this will be able to give us full credit because hypothetically speaking that is what we would like. Okay, so for the first one and for all the rest in between, we need to create a new sheet down here. Now we have the data sheet over here which has all the data and my graph sitting right there. Isn't it pretty? So I'm going to click over here on sheet 3. Now if you don't have that extra sheet you can click on the little plus sign and that'll add a sheet. So it just added worksheet number 4. So I'm going to click on sheet 3. I'm going to double click. I'm going to relabel it analysis. And then I can click off on to a cell anywhere and that's fine. Now I want to insert a text box because I want to answer all these questions in text. So I'm going to click over on the insert ribbon. Over on the right there's text box. So I'm going to click on that and then when I move my cursor down it turns into kind of this upside down kind of cross cursor. And then I want to left, hold down my left mouse button and I want to drag down and to the right. And then if I lift off on my mouse button I've created a text box which looks sort of like a sheet of paper. Now if you want to make it wider or narrower you can take your cursor down here and move it over one of the handles. So if you see this handle in the middle, if I move my cursor over it, it turns into a double sided arrow. Then I hold down the left mouse button, drag it to the right, it makes it larger. Or drag it to the left, it makes it narrower. And you can do that back and forth. Okay, so you would type your answers to number one, you know, and one actually requires you to identify your three different variables. So you'd have variable one, and then you'd identify its, you know, what it is, what its type is, whether it's qualitative, quantitative, um, discrete or quantitative, continuous, and its level of measurement. Then you do variable two, and so on. Variable three. Right, yada, 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 and you fill in all of this stuff. And I'll just say blah 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 blah. Right. So now if you want, you can make these bold if you want to make it pop out a little bit more, or you can make it so that um, your result your answers are bold, but the question is not, or whatever you want to do to make it very clear, very neat and organized. And that's what you'd continue to do. So you would just type in this sort of like a Word document, and you just keep typing and typing and typing and typing all of your different values. So number two, you know, and say blah, 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 <laughs> number three, and enter, you know, blah, 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 and so on. And it just keeps going like that forever and ever and ever, right, until you have all your questions answered. Now, that's how to make the text box work, and you can make it wider, narrow. You can fiddle around with the font sizes. You could highlight all of it. Right now it's an 11 font for me. I could make it 16 if I so desire. I can make it, you know, 20, but you want to make it something that it's easy to read, easy to figure out what's going on. You can always drag this over and make it bigger. Now we need Excel down here to calculate the price per mile for each of your cities, making it a separate column in your data tab. So based on this column value, so where we need Excel is number here and right here in number eight where we want to use Excel to calculate the price per mile for each of our cities, making it a separate column in your data tab. Based on this column, which flight is the best value, which flight is the worst value. Okay, so I'm not going to get into parts A and B, but I will show you how to calculate the price per mile. So I'm going to need to go back to my data tab, because I was over in, here in analysis writing, you know, lots and lots of stuff. Okay, so I need to go over back to the data tab by clicking on data. And move this graph over because I want to leave myself some space right here in column E. I'm going to call this price per mile. Enter. Now I made it bold, which is nice because I wanted it to be bold because it's a label, but it's making it too small. So I'm going to make it so that my cursor's on that line between the E and the F and it turns into a double sided arrow. And I double click and it'll change the width of that column perfectly for me. Now the price per mile is the price divided by how many miles the trip is. So for example, 
for Bangor, Maine, what I need to do is I need to take this price, which was $610.60, and I need to divide it by that round trip distance. And then I press enter, and it'll tell me that's how much, how many dollars it was per mile. Now, I want to do a couple of things. One, I want to fill this out with a border. So I'm going to highlight these two cells I've made, and I'm going to add the border menu up here. So I click on this little arrow, and I want to add all borders to it. That's just going to make my life easier because I'm about to fill this down the column. Because by doing this by cell referencing, that means that I can drag this formula down the column and it'll work. So I click back up on the cell with my formula, and in the bottom right corner of the cell, there's a little box. That's the handle. If I move my cursor over the handle, it turns from that kind of fat plus sign into a little black plus sign. So I'm going to hold down my left mouse button. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to fill out the whole column. When I get to the Traverse City at the bottom, I'm going to lift up on the left mouse button, and it fills out all of them for me. Nice, huh? So I can look through here very quickly and figure out what was my most expensive trip per mile and what was my least expensive trip per mile. All right, so that's some hints for you about how to do price per mile and then how to figure out best and worst values. The other thing you're going to want to do in Excel is figuring out your R value. Now the thing about R is that R is the square root of R squared, plus or minus, right? So R is either um, the positive square root of negative, or is positive square root of R squared or the negative square root of R squared, depending on the slope of your line. So I just added that as a little note down here for ourselves. So R is positive or negative square root of R squared. Um, you choose positive if slope is positive. And then, oops, you choose negative if slope is negative. Let me type those up. There we go. So you don't have to put that in your spreadsheet or anything. That's just for us to look at right now. And square root, SQRT, that's the abbreviation for it in, actually, that's the function for it in Excel. And R squared is R to the 2. Right? So caret 2 is how we square things on a calculator or with Excel. Okay, so if that's the case, I can see my R squared value right there. For me, it's 0 0.9609. I can also see my slope is positive. Right? This is an increasing slope. So since our graph is increasing, R is the positive square root of R squared. All right, so you don't have to write all of that. You just have to make note of it. So now you need to actually go find it. So we want the square root of 0 0.9609. And you can do it in either, um, I actually probably recommend you do it in the analysis tab because that way your instructor who's grading it will have some idea of where you got the answer from, which is, this is 10, right? So if you kind of come over here and click on any cell and just say 10 calculation, and then you want to type equals, SQRT, capital or lowercase, it doesn't matter. It's a function that Excel knows, SQRT. And you just got to tell it the number, which for me was 0 0.9609. For you, it'll be whatever it is. So whatever the calculator gives you, or excuse me, whatever Excel gives you, not the calculator, whatever Excel gives you as the R squared value, that is what you were taking the square root of. If you needed the negative square root, it'd be equal to negative SQRT of 0 0.9609, right? So if you had a negative slope, it would be negative square root of 0 0.9609. If you have a positive slope, it's the positive square root of 9609. So you have to choose which of these calculations is appropriate for you. In our case, it's the positive one. So I'm going to delete the other one because I don't need it. But that would give me what I would type over here for number 10. R is... 0.9803 C calculation in cell N20. Because for me, column N, row 20, N20 is right there and it has the calculation for me. And that is what I needed to do. I needed to calculate the R value in Excel. Then I still need to interpret it based on the context of the situation. So is this a strong relationship, uh, not positive, negative? What have we got? So that would be interpreting. All right, so everything else you would write up in that text box. And you can always highlight the whole text box, highlight all the text in it, 
change its font to 14, change its color to, um, never change its color to something that's um, hard for somebody with bad eyes to, to read. So that purple doesn't look too great. So stick with black, um, maybe very dark blue, those kinds of things. If you want, you can sometimes hit an accent with, um, so I hit bold for my R value, but leave the comment that I want to make about it here, that kind of thing. That's always a nice feature. And if you want to make something really pop, you can always put in a little bit of red font. So if you click on the A and click on red, you can make something pop as, with a red font. But you wouldn't want to write it all in red. That makes it very hard to read. And that's it. And you'll just type in all of your answers like this. If you need more space at the bottom, if, if your last blah, blah, blahs are just taking up too much area, it'll start writing it down below. So you have to take your cursor to that little handle in the middle of the paper, the middle of the text box. It'll turn into a double-sided arrow and then you can click and drag it down and make it longer to fit whatever it is you need to write. And that's it. You just make a big text box, adjust the size for it as needed, make sure everything is nice and clean and clearly labeled and very neatly organized. Any calculations you need, well, you only need a couple. One is the square root calculation to find your R, you put that right over here. And then you'll need to figure out your price per mile in your column for your data. You don't need all of this stuff written down here. This was just for our own benefit. Of course, it can't hurt you to write it, but that was just for us as we do we'll go through the video to see what was going on. All right, have a good time with your Lighting Things Up project and good luck with writing all of your answers up. I hope that it's a very enjoyable project for you.